Okay, so what I did was is I bought three eighth inch fender washers, lock nuts, and I believe these were eight millimeter by uh, one point five nuts, and I ground down the uh, washers. Uh, to replace these pieces which used to screw to this black back plate um, and really just flopped around. There was a lot of slop so it could move left to right which means that the x-axis and the y-axis weren't squared up. Now I measured from here to the washer and both sides are now identical so the bed should go on square. Um, pricing from Home Depot for the fender washers was a dollar, and the lock washers were a dollar ten, and the the nuts were basically a dollar a p a dollar for all or uh, two dollars for all four, but I had to get uh, ten point nine instead of regular eight grade eight because my Home Depot was out of them. But this is the CTC um, i3 something or other Chinese special. When you first get the printer, a lot of things are loose. So, one thing I found that was loose um, is if you see where this belt connects. Uh, you see, that's the way it came from the factory. So, I'm going to tighten that up and just make sure all these bolts are tight. I actually had to take apart the heat bed to get to this. There goes my my roll, my uh, pins uh, that the bearings slide on. Also, I noticed that uh, the uh, the bearings for, for the linear rails are just held on by zip ties. Um, so. I think I'm going to have to custom print something to, uh, you know, encapsulate these a little bit better. Um, I think that's because of the clearance down here is why they do that. Um, worst case scenario, I take those nuts back off, regrind them a little bit more, and and grind down the wood a little bit. But it just strikes me that zip ties, although they do hold them on fairly securely. Some more than some better than others, but they should stay lined up with each other because they are on these rods. <laughs> so I uh, reassembled the bed with the wing nuts, tightened this all up. Now you can not really move it, which is good because that was flopping around a little bit. Um, before I reinstall the rods, um, let's see. Um, I guess they're going to have to go in this way. Okay, before I fully reinsert the rods, I'm going to lubricate them. Now, I know a lot of people use all kinds of weird lubes, but um, I'm going to be using full synthetic grease that's designed for wheel bearings and uh, CV joints and that type of thing. Because if it lasts on a car at 500 degrees um, for 30,000 miles or 15,000 miles, um, it should last in this application. Plus, there's ball bearings inside the sliders, so um, it's you know this was actually designed for ball bearings. Um, so, and just remember, a little of this goes a long way. If you notice, when I pulled it out of that, it had gummed up a little um, because there's not much clearance in those in those bearings. But I'm just going to give it a little bit more here. And what will happen is, as see, as this moves, it'll, you know, it'll spread itself out. And the hotter it gets, 
you know, even it'll still protect the uh it'll still protect um much better than let's say three in one oil which doesn't stick or is runny uh, and has to be reapplied all of the time. So Okay, so after you've gotten everything tightened up, you're going to measure from here to here, and here to here. Make sure that the this is square to that, and the back is square to the middle. So everything should be square front to back for the x-axis. Um, so now, if you notice, when I try to wiggle it, there's no wiggle in it anymore. Um, because all the slop from these pieces has been taken out by putting those nuts and washers in. Um, obviously I've greased up the rails, I've tightened up the belt mechanism that holds the belt in, and everything slides free, nothing hits, and that's all there is to it. You've, you know, just make sure your belt's tight, and um, that should help improve your X axis. Next, uh, we're going to have to do the Y axis. Um, with, uh, I'm not entirely sure, but this belt tensioner, if you notice, just kind of spins. So I think this piece has to be reprinted. I'm going to probably, if you notice, there's some wobble up here. I'm probably going to upgrade that. Um, and I'll take you through the process of doing all that stuff. Hopefully I should have some new hot ends for this that I can test out. Um, I'm hoping to make this $150 printer print as good as the five, six hundred, seven hundred dollar units. Alright, have a good night.